everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favourite bird, Archie. So, we're doing a Brandy Melville haul today. I am going to put some timestamps for you guys below because I have a, a really, really long rant. I advise you listen to it. I, I think it's important, but if you're just here for clothes, then just skip ahead. But uh, anyway, Brandy Melville. I had never heard of it before. I had a huge amount of comments asking me to do a Brandy Melville haul, but because I didn't know the brand, I... I never was interested. I was like, I just want to focus on brands that I, I know. Fast forward to me being in Hawaii and walking through the Ala Moana Center in Waikiki, and I just so happened to walk past a physical Brandy Melville store. And I stopped and I looked at it and I thought, Brandy Melville, that's the one that people keep leaving comments about. So I decided to go in, have a bit of a shop around. Uh, let's have a look at some shopping footage first. I don't know anything about this store. I've uh, been requested many, 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 many times that I review it. So, I mean, it's right there. And I had a little look in the window and it looks trendy. So let's get in there and uh, do a bit of a haul. Now here's the thing, I got home, went to film the video, went to search for Brandy Melville so that I could find the hyperlinks to put in the description box for the clothes. And when I searched Brandy Melville on Google, some very interesting and enlightening articles popped up for me. Turns out the brand is somewhat controversial. There's a lot of articles talking about how Brandy Melville fuels body dysmorphia, they aren't inclusive, they have terrible reviews for customer service, and it seems like a very, very negative place to work. So I decided to do a little bit more research. Before we get into the haul, let's break down Brandy Melville and who they actually are. So Brandy Melville came to the United States from Italy in 2009, and it was controlled by a father and son team, Silvio and Steven Marson. I find that interesting, considering the standards that this brand imposes. I find it kind of problematic that it's run by two men. Brandy Melville really took off, and by 2018 they boasted almost $300 million in sales, which is insane to me because that's like not that much less than what Pretty Little Thing makes, and that's a massive brand. I had no idea they were so huge. So the Brandy Melville girl that they've established through social media and marketing campaigns and even who they choose to work in their stores is a skinny, young, and almost exclusively white girl, at least up until recently. This sort of campaign's really reminiscent of Abercrombie and Fitch. Brandy Melville's really notorious in the social media space. They don't really do PR or interviews or announcements, and they don't really tackle all the heat that's been targeted on them. I also noticed from going on their Facebook page that they don't really uh, engage with their customers. Anyone that leaves complaints or questions they completely ignore, which kind of reinforces the idea that they've got bad customer service. Just some examples of some of the Facebook complaints that I found. A mother was complaining about how her 13 year old daughter wanted to buy a skirt, but there was only one size. Your brand targets the middle school teens, the age group that is so sensitive to body image. How dare you offer clothes in a single size? A size that she said looked like a petite size two. This really bothers me because I completely remember when I was in middle school and I was probably an Australian size 14 or maybe even a 16 and I could never fit into the little tiny clothes that a lot of my friends were wearing and it made me feel really really insecure, made me feel terrible compared to them. It really does fuel body dysmorphia to only sell one size. Another customer wrote, it sends a completely wrong message by only selling clothes in one size. It makes young girls feel like there's only one right size and if you don't fit that there's something wrong with you. Again, I completely agree. Another mother wrote about how her 11 year old daughter started crying in the dressing rooms because the one size skirt didn't fit and now she started dieting to fit into the skirt. I cannot stress how much I relate to this. I remember going into a store when I first went to Hawaii, this is quite a few years ago, I was an Australian size 16 at the time, and I remember just breaking down on the floor of the change room and bawling my eyes out. I was literally uncontrollably sobbing because I felt so... I, 
felt terrible. I felt terrible about the way that I looked. I felt terrible that I wasn't fitting into the sizes that they had in the store. It's... I understand in Asian countries when there's one size fits all because in Korea or Japan, for example, the majority of women are quite petite. So it makes more sense to me for there to be like a one size fits all kind of thing in Asian countries. But we're talking about sizing in America here. This is a huge store in America and their slogan is one size fits most. Mo most who? Most Japanese people? It's things like this that fuel the dozens of articles that say that Brandy Melville promotes body dysmorphia. The one size fits most slogan was literally printed on the tags of the clothes. They have it in the stores, on signs, they have it everywhere. I saw that sign in store and it was kind of hard for me when I was shopping in there because I had my best friend Tiasha with me and Tiasha's an Australian size 14 or 16. She loved the style. Both her and I adore this style of clothing. It's like, you know, early 2000s style, kind of looks like thrifted grunge kind of clothes. Beautiful colours too. Tiasha loved the look of all of it, but she couldn't find a single thing in her size. So uh, the one size fits most thing is a huge problem to me. An assistant manager from Brandy Melville came under some heat recently because they said that the one size fits most thing was probably just a mistranslation from Italian to English. Do they think we're gonna fall for that? From a profit standpoint, the one size fits most thing does make it easier for brands to mass produce their clothes, but let's be honest here, a size extra small to small is only gonna fit such a small amount of people, no pun intended. According to the International Journal of Fashion Design, Technology and Education, the average size of an American woman is between a size 16 and 18. So in what universe does the one-size-fits-most policy of Brandy Melville apply to any woman in the United States or in Australia or in England? Also, let's talk about working at Brandy Melville. Despite having an overall rating of 3.4 on glass ceiling, when you read some of the negative reviews from the employees, it is truly baffling. One wrote, all the stock workers are either Latino or women of colour and you'd never see them on the floor. Another wrote, they only hire tall, white and skinny girls who fit the demographic of their clothing and they make sure of this by taking photos of you every day and at your interview, they take photos of your face and body. Keep in mind, these girls are probably 15 to 17 years old. One former employee wrote, if you're signed to a modeling agency, you get paid more for the same job. They say you must wear brandy clothes when you come to work, but they don't give you a clothing allowance. This is pretty brutal because there's been reports saying that the staff will come into work, take clothes off the hangers, wear them for their shift that day, and then put them back on the hangers to be sold. We are talking about 15 to 17 year old girls working in the store. And if they have to wear Brandy Melville and the prices of the clothes, they're not cheap. They can be quite expensive. And they're expecting 15 year olds to be able to fork out 50 bucks for a pair of jeans that they're trying to work to be able to afford clothes. <laughs> it makes no sense. No sense at all. And I can attest to the fact that the workers will take off the clothes and put them back on the hangers because I literally saw that happen when I was in the store. There was a pink top and I saw an employee take it off, go out the back, and then I saw her come from out the back and put exactly the same pink top on a rack. I did end up buying that, by the way, because it was the only one. Didn't even have a price tag on it because she'd been wearing it, but uh, anyway, don't judge me. It was a really nice top. This is what... There's a lot of, um contradiction in this video because I whinge about the brand, but I also really like the clothes. So anyway, let me continue. Yes, you want to hear it, don't you? So like I said, I bought these clothes before I knew anything about Brandy Melville and before I knew anything about their, the way that they promote body dysmorphia and the way that they treat their employees. And uh, I did spend a thousand dollars there. So I really don't want the clothes to go to waste. I know there's a lot of people that watch my videos that do really want to see a Brandy Melville haul because they want to buy the stuff for themselves. But I just really wanted to get that out there and tell you guys that I don't support their behavior at all. If I had done the research before I bought the stuff, I don't think I would have bought it. I mean, honestly, if you go shopping with a friend of yours and you fit in the clothes and your friend doesn't, it's really heartbreaking to see, to know that you can buy whatever you want, but your friend, who is a very normal size, cannot find a single thing that'll fit her. I know how it feels. It's devastating and makes me really, really angry. So I just wanted to get that off my chest before I got into the try on part of this video. Like I said, I don't want this stuff to go to waste. I spent so much money on it and there's some very cute items. But another thing that I just want to say is 
A lot of the stuff from Brandy Melville is very reminiscent of thrift stores, but it's just a lot more expensive. I know that I have seen items like some of these things in my local thrift stores. Every time I go there you can find stuff like this. I owned a whole bunch of stuff like this when I was uh, probably in my early teens. I would be very interested in doing a video where I go and visit a thrift store and try and find the equivalent items of clothing. So I'll look at the stuff from this haul, I'll go to a thrift store and I'll try and match the stuff. I'll try and find an equivalent t-shirt and a, an equivalent pair of jeans and stuff like that at a thrift store. And if you want to see that video, give us a thumbs up and let me know down below because I would love to do that. I definitely want to get more into thrifting videos. So with that, now that that's over and done with, I'd like to show you some of the stuff that I got. Okay, so to kick things off, I'm going to show you guys my absolute favorite purchase out of everything that I got. I think that this is probably the most worth the money. There's a lot of shirts in this haul that I feel like, yeah, they all look exactly the same, but just in slightly different colors, and you can probably get them in a thrift store. But these jeans, these are unique. I haven't seen jeans like this in many, many years. I remember when I was in year 10 at school, so probably 2009, I had a black pair of jeans like this. These are really, really, really wide boot cut jeans and they have huge pockets all over them too. They're somewhat high waisted as well. They're very comfortable. Again, everything here is one size. So this would be the equivalent of uh, an Australian size six, probably. These are so, oh, I love them. They're like 40, 40 something dollars, or maybe they were 50, I can't quite remember. I have worn these all over the place. A lot of the things from the video, I, I didn't wear them yet because I wanted to film it first, but I couldn't resist, I had to wear these. I wore these all over Japan when I was last there. Can I, uh, I need to try them on now, Archie. That's not a purge. Yes, those, those pants really suit you, Archie. You, you can let go now. Up. Now what? I love the length of these. I love how wide the leg is. It's amazing. I don't know anywhere else that I could find pants like this. I've been looking for these early 2000s style jeans for quite some time and I wasn't ever able to find them. If you know somewhere else that I could find jeans that have this extremely wide boot cut on them, please let me know. Also, I love the pockets too. These are incredible. They feel really, really well made. I definitely justify the price on these, but there's a lot of things coming up that I can't justify the price on. Okay, so top number one is uh, a floral top. This is $20. It's made of nice material, it's quite thick, doesn't feel like a cheap top. It's got a really cute neckline. I do love the design of the flowers as well. This seems like a really popular print at Brandy Melville. They had this in dresses and they had it in skirts and long sleeve tops and all sorts of things. I definitely think that I have seen things like this in a thrift store though. This print is very um, 90s, 2000s. You can find this sort of stuff for a dollar or two in a thrift store. If you don't have thrift stores in your area and you wanna do online shopping, this one's 18 US dollars, so probably 26 Australian dollars. It's a little bit more like it. This one's definitely thinner than the last one. Feels well made though. None of these things necessarily feel poorly made. They do feel like they're well constructed, but yeah, it's just in terms of value for money. It's a very, very tiny little t-shirt. It's very soft. I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this. I love the pink and white stripes. Sorry. I think if more of the tops were $18, it would make them more worth it. Sometimes I'll say something's expensive and people will say, no, that's not expensive, that's cheap. But the way that I see it is this stuff is mass produced in China in one size only. So the fact that they're only producing one size in China, they've turned over $300 million in sales last year or whatever it was. $18 seems like a little bit of a ripoff for something that you could easily get in a thrift store and it's very basic. If you went to Walmart, and Walmart would have the same sort of factories that Brandy Melville would have in China. So you would get this for like two bucks in Walmart versus 18 US dollars. But anyway, again, very cute design. This is another $18 t-shirt. I love this style. This feels so cheap. So, this is so thin. I have a I wore clothes from Walmart for a week video coming up soon. And I literally got a t-shirt like this for $3 from Walmart for $18. Not worth it at all. I'm sure you could find this in a thrift store. This plain white top is a $24 top. 24 US dollars is probably 30, 31 or 33 Australian dollars. Again, on the more pricey end for just a plain white top, but it does have little buttons all the way down. No, that wasn't an invitation to try. They're so small you can hardly get your fingers around them. Also, it's a plain white shirt, but I don't know if you'll be able to see. It does have little teeny tiny holes that kind of make like a little flower pattern. So that is really cute. I love this shirt. I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of it. I better for a 
30 something Australian dollars, I better wear it a lot. It's very versatile, you can again wear this with jeans or wear it with a skirt or wear it with shorts or wear it even under like a pinafore or under a strappy dress. Can, are you right? Do you wanna, can you get out of my face please? What? What? You think I'm crazy? But definitely the way that I would prefer to wear this is with jeans and probably skinny jeans and a pair of high heels and like a cute little saddle bag. I think that would be adorable. But yeah, a little bit more on the expensive end for this one and probably something you could find in a thrift store as well. Okay, so this top is a $20 top. I love this. I really like the way that it fits. I really like the neckline. Has a cute little pinched detail here, which is adorable. I love the pattern. It's got little flowers all over it. And I've paired it with these white jeans. Now these are the same cut and style as the first jeans. These were $46 something US dollars. I would buy these again in a heartbeat. If these came in different colors, I would definitely buy them. I love the way that they fit. These have huge pockets. I wore these to Japan. People loved them. They left comments on my Instagram asking me where they were from. And I do think that this top is really, really sweet. Again, it's a $20 top, probably not worth $20 probably find it in a thrift store. I'm gonna stop saying that because I think that that applies to every single thing that I'm about to show you guys. You could find all of it in a thrift store. Tell me if you found anything like this while you were thrift shopping, or maybe you own something like this from when you were a kid. Definitely some of this stuff is more like kid-ish. You know, you, I can imagine tweens wearing clothes like this. Yes, I'm 26 years old and no, that's not gonna stop me. I'm gonna wear this shirt a lot. I think it's adorable. This would be really pretty with a skirt. Actually, I can imagine like a high-waisted, very long skirt puffing out like that. That would be lovely. These jeans with all these tops I'm about to show you is a great outfit combination. That is something that I like about Brandy Melville, that the clothes seem to be... You can literally pick up any top and pair it with any pair of pants from the brand and everything seems to look quite nice together. This one is a $16 top. It's got this little teeny tiny V just here. $16 is definitely more along the lines of what I would expect to pay for these sort of tops. The funny thing is that this is not really any different fabric or any different material or not made any different to a $24 top from Brandy Melville, but I mean, I don't know how they determine their pricing, but $16 is definitely more reasonable. It is very plain though, but I quite like these plain tops. Can I help you? Where are you going? Well, where are you going? You've heard of a bum bag. Now we have a bum bird. <laughs> this one is a $24 top. I love the colors. The colors are amazing. This is purple and yellow and white and it looks so nice. I think that it fits really nicely too. Again, with the one size thing, I reckon you could push this from a size two to maybe like a size four, but I don't think that it would stretch very much for maybe a size six, possibly. I'm talking US sizes, Australian sizes, an Australian size six or an Australian size eight would fit this. I love this design. I'm gonna wear this a lot. I do really, really like it. I can't really say anything negative about this. I want to say negative things because I'm very angry with the brand and their practices. Ah! ah. Might be on the pricier end, but it's a really nice design and I do adore the colors, so this one, Gets a pass from me. Okay, so this one, plain pink top, cute little detail at the bottom. It's just got a little tiny frilly hemline. This was $18. And the funny thing is, my best friend Sam did a thrift store challenge over on his channel. Bless you. And he bought a top identical to this for me from the thrift store. And I think it cost him two or $3. So uh, case kind of in point, I'm kind of proving that yes, you can get Brandy <gasps> Melville stuff from thrift stores. This is an adorable top. It sits at a, a cute height. I mean, it's just, my, my bra is like right there. So it could be just the littlest bit longer. I love the color. I like the cut. It's still expensive for what it is. But again, all the stuff from this store, these little shirts, they're all very basic, minimal kind of shirts, minimalistic shirts, I would say. I don't know, what should I say, Archie? What is there to say? I guess I could be sad that it's not green. Bye-bye. Oh, what are you saying bye-bye for? Bye-bye. 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Up, up. Okay, so next up we have this turtleneck, which is $24, which is an absolute joke because it feels so cheap. This is the thinnest fabric. It's ridiculous. It's so thin. It looks nice, but like all white turtlenecks look nice as far as I'm concerned. I have bought much nicer turtlenecks <gasps> for much less, but I've paired it with this skirt. This skirt's really, really cool. It's um an open skirt, like the whole thing 
opens up like that and then it does up with a buckle at the side here. They don't give you very much room though with this buckle situation. There's a tiny little belt thing here and it's only got a couple of little belt holes so they could have done so much more with this. They could have given you a little bit of a longer thing there and then it would have been accessible for more sizes but again this is only going to fit like an Australian size 6 but I love the colour of it. It's really nice. This is a $28 skirt. I would probably pay that for this skirt again. I mean, I bought all of this myself. I didn't get any of this for free. So when I say I would pay that, I did pay that. But what I mean is, outside of a YouTube context, if it was just shopping every day, not for videos or anything, I would probably buy this skirt. I do really like the colour of it. I like the way that it fits. I haven't really done it up properly. I think that there's meant to be a button in here somewhere so that this part doesn't fall down, it's falling down. So I'm gonna try and fix that. Okay, so I found the button on the inside, but it's a very, very small button. It's very hard to do up. Okay, so I've just put on this $16 camisole top over the top. $16 for something so teeny, teeny, tiny isn't wonderful, but it is Fine. green. Yes, do we like it? What do you think? It has cute little frilly details up here. I love putting these sort of tops over the top of a turtleneck. I think as an outfit, this is really nice. I uh, stole this look directly off a mannequin. They do know how to style things in Brandy, I'll give them that. I think that the clothes on their Instagram feed are really nice. The way they style the mannequins in store is cool too. I really like this outfit. This is quite an expensive outfit though when you think about it, because if the skirt's $28, the turtleneck's $24, and the cami is $16, this is probably over $100 Australian dollars just for this outfit alone, which is pretty atrocious. Like, I, I literally think that I could go to Walmart and put together an outfit like this for 20 maybe? 20 or $30? So it's, it's a fair bit. Can someone please tell me, please explain, how to wear a beret? Berets never look right. When I put them on my head, I, I'm like, is that how it's supposed to be? I don't think so. Is it supposed to sit back like that? Probably, but it still doesn't look right. So this beret is $15. It's quite a thick material. It's quite nice. $15 is okay. This top is $18. $18 for a tiny little grey plain t-shirt, would not recommend. But this skirt though, now this is a $30 skirt, this is a lovely skirt. It's quite long, I really like the way that it fits, I love the animal print, it's very soft and flowy, really easy to wear. The fabric is quite light fabric so it's good for summertime. Definitely looks nice paired with a lot of these smaller tops as well. 30 US for this skirt is 40 something Australian dollars for it, so do you guys think that this skirt is worth 40 something Australian dollars if you're from Australia? Would you be willing to pay that? I don't know what I think about this, I do like the design though, can't fault it, it's a really pretty skirt. Okay, so this is a $24 top. The color is perfect. This is one of my favorite tops. I know it's very plain, but I really like the button details. I like the length of it. It's extremely comfortable, feels very well made, and I've paired it with this skirt. Now this is a $28 skirt. This skirt has a matching top as well that I'll put on in a second, but let's just take a minute to appreciate that I match my backdrop. This green gingham print seems really really popular at Brandy Melville. They've made tops in it, they've made skirts, they've made pants. The skirt is exactly the same style as that blue one that I showed you earlier and I do think that it's somewhat worth the money. I love this look. This is like a real, this is one of my favorite styles. I love this outfit so much. I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this. I know when I post on Instagram and people are gonna ask me where it's from, I'm gonna have a pang of guilt saying it's from Brandy Melville because likelihood of a large group of people being able to fit is quite low because one size does not fit most. Okay, so this is definitely gonna be an Archie favorite. It is all green. They have a lot of these two-piece sets at Brandy Melville, matching tops and matching skirts. It's nice if you buy the whole look because you can swap it out. You can wear this top with a different skirt, wear the skirt with a different top. Relatively expensive outfit though, $28 for the skirt. $30 for the top or whatever it is. I think it's about 30. Can you get that tag for me, please? $26 for the top. $26 for the top and $28 for the skirt makes it a 60 US dollar outfit. Probably 80 Australian dollars, if my calculations aren't incorrect, which is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Definitely not worth it. <laughs> Ooh, I'm allergic to these bull prices. Again, because I have purchased these, I'm going to wear them a lot, but would not recommend for the price. That's that's a fair bid. Papa. Papa. <laughs> okay, I love this next top. This is a waffle knit top, so it's got really interesting texture. Has cute little flowers all over it. It's got a really really nice fit, a really nice cut. It's $28. A little bit expensive because it doesn't feel very thick. 
feels a little bit cheap. The waffle knit is quite nice though. These are $30 shorts. These shorts are made of linen, so they crease quite easily. These are $30, which is all right for these. I actually don't mind that. I think in everyday life outside of YouTube, I would be willing to pay $30 for these shorts because I really like the height of the waist. It's got a very, very high waist and I really like the length of them too. They're not like little tiny booty shorts. So I really, really like these. Okay, I have no idea how much this top was because this was the top that the employee was wearing and then she came out of the back of the store and put it on the hanger and put it on the rack. It had no tag on it. That's part of the reason that I knew that it was exactly the one that she'd been wearing considering she was wearing it. She came out wearing a different top and put this one on the rack. So I can't tell you how much this was. This is one of my favorite tops that I own. I wore this all over Japan. I love the sleeves, love the length. I love the color, the color's perfect. I like the V-neck. It's a really, really nice fabric. It's extremely comfortable. This one has a lot of stretch in it. There are some things at Brandy Melville that you can push past just one size if you get the right fabric. This would probably fit an Australian size 10 as well a six through to a 10. This is one of my favorite purchases. I paired this with the white jeans, wore it all over Japan, loved it. It's one of my favorite outfits. I will wear this for a very, very, very long time and love it every time that I wear it. So I do recommend these. I love the material, it's amazing. Cannot tell you how much this was though. I cannot remember. So, I mean, if this was even $30, US, I would probably have paid that for it if I picked it up and if there'd been a price on it and I knew how much it was. If I'd seen $30, I'd be like, you know what? Yes, because it's an amazing top. What can I say? Pricey, but nicey. Okay, so this top also didn't have a price on it and it smells ever so slightly like BO. So it could possibly have been someone's work uniform for a little while, I have no way of knowing. But this is not two separate pieces. These sleeves are attached. So it looks like it's a t-shirt with a long sleeve top underneath. I really like this aesthetic. I like this trend. This is a very warm top. I'm going to assume this was another one that was in the 30 something dollar price range. Not as versatile because you can't take the sleeves off and wear it if it's summer. It's way too hot to wear this. This is so warm, but I do love the look of it. Tell me what you think. Do you like this? This is the one of the only things that's not cute and pastel, but it is one of my favorites and it is way too hot for me to be wearing because standing in front of these lights is very, very warm. Okay, so I've just put the white turtleneck back on so I can show you these pants. These are $35. This is that same print that you saw earlier. These fit in quite an unusual way. They fit around my waist really well, but also they don't look so flattering. They're kind of pinching in a really, really weird way. They're extremely comfortable though. They're super, super soft. Do they have pockets? No pockets! Why make pants without pockets? Why? What is this madness? Okay, I was so happy to find these next pants. I have been wanting pink corduroy pants for the longest time and I couldn't believe when I walked into Brandy, they were right there in front of me. These are $38. I definitely justify that. I love them. The color of them is amazing. They're quite small. The funny thing is that they're supposed to be the same size as those jeans that I tried, but those jeans had so much more room in them than what these do. These are very, very, very tight, but they're very soft. Aside from how tight they are around my hips, they're very comfortable in the legs. I like the length of them, love the color. Wish that I had these in other pastel colors. I would love these in blue and in yellow and in purple. If only these came in other colors. If you know anywhere that I can buy really nice corduroy pants like these, please let me know because they are my obsession. I particularly like them when they have a bootleg or like a, a flared bell bottom on the bottom. That's my favorite type of corduroy. But yeah, these, these are some of my favorites. I also picked up this. This was only $8. This is like a little chain that's supposed to hang off your pants. It's supposed to clip around the belt hook like that. They have a lot of really cool accessories at Brandy Melville and they do seem like a reasonable price. This is stainless steel and it's $8. I definitely think that's worth it. I, I can appreciate that one a lot. What do you think? You like it? Okay, and next up is this $28 dress. This print was the same as one of the tops that I showed you earlier. Feels uh, very, very thin. Don't know if it's worth the 28 US dollars, the 30 something Australian dollars, 
maybe because it's a dress and there's a fair bit more fabric. This is also quite stretchy. You could push this maybe to a, an Australian size eight. I don't think you'd be able to push it to a size 10. I've worn it with the turtleneck underneath because I just, I love wearing turtlenecks underneath dresses like this. I think it's so pretty. This is the only dress that I picked up. There weren't actually very many dresses in the store, hardly any at all. Huge amounts of tops, huge amounts of skirts, not many dresses. So I was very happy when I picked this one up. There was a lot of things in this print. There were skirts and various things, but I only wanted to get two, you know, so I could show you guys quite a variety of different designs. So uh, that's it guys. I hope you like this video. Let me know what your thoughts are about Brandy Melville. If you have the same problem with them that I have, tell me if you've ever shopped there and whether you thought that it was quite expensive. I know I spent a thousand dollars and this is not a thousand dollars worth of clothes by any means in any way at all. If I wasn't a YouTuber, I would not have done this. Obviously I'm doing this because I'm trying to show you guys, so many people asked me to review this brand, so that's why I'm doing it. I hope that it benefits you. I hope that I've answered some of your questions. There was a lot of things that were extremely sheer, I noticed at Brandy, and I tried to stay away from that sort of stuff. I tried to get stuff that was like a nice thick fabric because no point buying clothes that are super, super sheer that you can't really get much wear out of. So I'm really happy with the items that I got. I will definitely wear them. I don't want these things to go to waste but I'm definitely interested in doing a thrift store challenge to try and find these sort of clothes in a thrift store for a much cheaper price. So if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. You can find me on Instagram, it's Pretty Pastel Please. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!